Hello friends, uh, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Rajinder Singh, professor in agriculture and food engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. We are in week 6, lecture 27 and the topic today is gully control measures, permanent structures. Just to have a look at the course content of this week, we started this week uh, with lecture 26 where we introduced gully control measures. Today we are continuing that and looking at the gully control measures especially permanent structures. In lecture 28 we will look into design considerations for permanent gully control structures and lectures 29 and 30 they would be devoted to basics of open channel hydraulics in part two, two parts. Part 1 will be in lecture number 29 and part 2 will be in lecture number 30. Just to give you a quick uh, recap of what we have discussed earlier, uh, we in the previous class we discussed about gully control measures and we said that uh, the gully control measures can be broadly classified into biological or vegetative measures and engineering measures. And then we saw under biological or vegetative measures there were sod flumes, anti erosion crops, low solid earth fleas, sod strip checks. Uh, one way was to changing gully into grass waterway and of course, tree and subs are always there. And then we also had a look at the temporary gully control structures in the previous lecture and today we will look at the permanent gully control structures. And talking about permanent gully control structures, there are three basic types of permanent structures that are employed in stabilizing gullies and these are drop spillway, drop inlet spillway and shoot spillway. So, there are three basic types of permanent structures, drop spillway, drop inlet spillway and shoot spillway. And of course, like all gully control structures, they are used in gully for stabilization of course, but the here it is typically they are adopted for medium to large drainage areas. If you remember when we talked about the uh, vegetative measures or the temporary gully, gully control structures, they were all limited to small to medium uh, uh, gullies. But in this case, permanent structures are typically adopted for medium to large drainage area and in situations where temporary structures may fail. So, if you remember temporary structures typically they are adopted for gully which are up to um, 5 meters depth and where the drainage area is less than 20 hectares and uh, if the gully size is larger or the drainage area is more then we have to employ permanent gully control structures because in those scenario temporary gully structures may fail. And these structures are, uh, are referred as permanent because usually they are built of masonry or reinforced concrete. So, that means their life of uh, life span is much longer as compared to temporary structures which is only 3 to 8 years as we saw in the previous class. And permanent structures or permanent gully control structures are definitely uh, uh, adopted in any soil and water conservation program or watershed management program because they have proven their efficiency or their utility for efficient erosion control. So, they are considered as efficient erosion control tools or structures and that is why they are always in built part of any soil and water conservation program. Now, coming to drop spillway, the first one, it is a weir structure in which flow passes through the weir opening, falls on an apron and then passes into the downstream channel. So, this is how it looks, it is a weir structure because the main spillway is nothing but a rectangular weir. So, this is basically a rectangular weir and this is this is the upstream side. So, flow is coming from this direction, flow is approaching the structure in this direction. So, as you can see this is this is referred to as sill. So, this is sill height. 
So, of course, the moment the water level in the upstream channel is above the sill height, the water will uh, flow over the weir or the over the sill or the over the weir and then it will fall on the downstream side. Now, because it the water falls from a certain height, then it might cause uh, severe erosion because the kinetic energy of the flow will be much higher. Therefore, to provide protection to downstream side, we provide apron, apron. So, water has to fall on this apron, details of this apron and apron design we will see later classes. But typically when water falls on this apron because it is a protective area, so it may not cause any erosion and then it smoothly passes into the downstream channel. So, this is how basically drop is spillway looks like. Now, coming to components uh, of drop spillway, uh, there are several components in a drop spillway. So, as you can see here, this is the weir sill we just not talked about, this is the weir, this is the main opening through which water passes on the downstream side and this is basically this component is referred to as head wall and this head wall is extended beyond the gully width, so to in the sides also and this is referred to as head wall extension on either side head wall extension is there. Uh, typically after the structure is built, it will be completely filled with earth. So, earth fills will be put and that is why this side you cannot see, but this side you can see just for explanation it has been kept like this. Then when the water falls over the re, uh, weir or passes over the weir, just to keep it protected within the confines of the gully. Uh, side walls are constructed on either side. So, these are two side walls and the downstream side we all, all, all already saw that when the water falls, uh, it should fall on a protected area which is an apron. At the end of apron, uh, the, the, there are wing walls which are provided that is again to protect the banks, uh, this uh, it is a wing type of structure and that is why it is a wing walls the name is. Two types of fills like longitudinal seals and end seals are provided on the apron to provide stability or strength to apron because it has to bear a lot of load. And then two protection walls uh, below the earth they are provided, one is cut off wall on the upstream side and there is a two wall on the downstream side. So, these are the various components of a um, drop spill where there is a head wall, head wall extension, side wall, cut off wall, toe wall longitudinal and end seals, wing wall and apron and we will see what are the functions of each of these components in a while. Coming to functions of various components, talking about head wall, it acts as a front wall against runoff in the drop spillway that I already mentioned that uh, the water will this is up from this is the upstream side from which water is flowing. So, water will first hit the head wall and once the water level in the in the gully above the sill height, then water will flow over the weir. So, this is the first wall. So, it is a it is acts as a front wall against runoff in the drop spillway and of course, the size of the weir which is provided which is sitting over the head wall that should be sufficient to pass the design discharge safely which is obvious because if, if the capacity is not uh, good enough then the structure life of the structure might be in danger itself. Then there are this head wall is extended on either side that is referred to as head wall extension and it permits stable fill and prevents piping due to seepage around the structure. So, as I already mentioned there will be earth fills on either side. So, that uh, uh, this head wall extension provides stability to the um, this earth fill which, which is provided there and also from once the water is flowing in the gully, there might be some seepage occurring from the side and if that seepage is continued, then slowly and slowly it takes a, a shape of a pipe and that is why this phenomena is referred to as piping. So, once head wall extension is there, then obviously whatever seepage occurs that is checked at this point itself and the piping phenomena is completely eliminated by the head wall. Then there are side walls, uh, these are to guide the water and protect the fill against erosion. So, these are 
the side walls and of course, they protect uh, the field against erosion which is quite obvious because water will be flowing at a velocity on the this side and if uh, no protection is provided then the, the earth fields on either side will be on, in, in danger of erosion. So, that side wall pr pr protects uh, the field against erosion and of course, guides the water so that water is confined within the uh, uh, width of the uh, gully on the downstream side. Then con continuing with other we have uh, wing walls as I said all on either side we have wing walls in the in the shape of a wing and they provide stability to fill and give protection to gully banks and surface. So, obviously, protection to sill is uh, protection to earth fill is one important uh, uh, earth fill or whatever kind of fill we use that is the first uh, 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 first uh, uh, function of all the walls which are provided uh, like like head wall extension like side wall like uh, wing wall and but at the same time it also protects the gully banks from erosion. Then we have apron uh, this is apron which we uh, already saw and uh, this dissipates the kinetic energy of falling water by creating hydraulic jump. So, hydraulic jump phenomena may take place we will discuss about all these uh, hydraulics in later half of this week. Uh, latter part of this week rather and uh, then, uh, uh, but this is the apron which is provided for dissipating the kinetic energy. Then we have longitudinal seats which provide stability to, to, to the apron itself. So, these are provided to give stability to apron. Then uh, we have end seal its main function is to obstruct the water from going directly into the channel below. So, uh, I mean it kind of kind some kind of protection to the downstream um, side and then there are two walls cut off wall and toe wall. So, cut off wall prevents piping under the structure besides reducing of lift and preventing sliding. So, um, uh, like we saw that uh, there could be piping um, from the side of the structure there could be piping below the uh, structure also. So, the cut off wall is provided to check that piping and also there, there will be of course, hydrostatic pressure working on the structure because of the water and of course, because of its own weight it, there will be sliding tendency. So, head uh, this cut off wall provides st stability to structure and prevents uh, from uplift or sliding and also prevents piping. Tow wall does a similar function on the downstream side that it prevents undercutting of apron that if water which, which falls it might seep below the structure and then the apron may be undercut. So, once two wall is there this two wall which is here this uh, prevents this uh, seepage of water back under the structure and uh, thus uh, prevents the undercutting of apron. So, these are uh, different functions of different structures. Now, coming to site selection proper site selection is dependent on the availability of adequate field survey and foundation data on all practical alternate sites. So, obviously, when we are going to construct uh, a drop is spillway, then we have to ha have an idea about various sites possible and the relevant data of those sites have to be analyzed. And site selection should be such that structure satisfies the objective that is means it provides uh, protection to the gully meets the stability requirement that it, it is it is stable for its uh, life span and of course, the cost is minimum. So, these are three different criteria which the structure must satisfy uh, or the site must satisfy for the instruction for the structure to be um, constructed. Then coming to material of construction, the material of construction could be concrete, masonry, concrete blocks or reinforced concrete and uh, uh, this is a most widely used material reinforced concrete and because it is suitable for long life and it has low annual cost including maintenance. So, uh, it, 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 it the annual cost of uh, a structure built uh, using reinforced concrete as material of construction is found to be low. In case a number of structures are involved the selection of materials should be based on required life span of a structure 
an annual cost comparison including maintenance. So, of course, uh, the selection of the material of construction will depend on the life span and also the annual cost compa comparison include maintenance. So, what whichever material uh, serves the purpose of uh, providing stability over the entire life span and also um, where the cost of uh, annual cost is the lowest that is chosen as the material of construction. Then uh, use of drop spillway, drop spillway can be used in similar ways uh, to control gradient in either natural or constructed channels. So, of course, uh, that is the major function that to stabilize gully we provide them uh, to serve as reservoir spillway uh, when the total drop is relatively low. So, even uh, they can be used as in the reservoirs for as a spillway to control tail water at the outlet of a spillway or conduit. They can also be used as a as outlet structure of a spillway or a conduit uh, in order to control the tail water or they can also be put to serve as inlet and outlet structures for tile drainage system. So, many possible ways in which drop spillways could be utilized. Now, coming to advantages, uh, drop spillways are quite popular because they offer certain advantages. For example, the first and foremost stability. Drop spillway is a very stable structure and likelihood of serious structural damages are remote. As we have seen that it is a simple weir structure, the construction is very simple, no complications and that is why uh, it is a stable and uh, there is no possibility of serious structural damage if it is properly designed of course. And another advantage is uh, the in the form of the rectangular weir which is used uh, in, in drop spillway uh, which is always less susceptible to clogging by debris etcetera. So, non clogging of weir is also a, a, a great advantage which provides not only provides stability, but also from functional point of view there is no possibility of flow stoppage completely. So, that is a big, big advantage. Then of course, ease and economy of construction relatively easy to construct already said because it is a very simple design. So, it is very easy to construct low maintenance cost uh, because there are no movable parts or no complicated parts. So, obviously, the maintenance cost is very, very low and standardization that these may be standardized which may result in savings in engineering and constructional costs. So, because their design is very simple and uh, if once the flow conditions and the site conditions are similar in a given uh, uh, area where soil conjecture program is to be taken up and where a series of drop spillways are to be constructed there it, it might be possible to standardize their design and put a similar kind of structure. So, that every time you do not have to invest money on engineering or design costs. Then uh, next is uh, disadvantages. Uh, disadvantages see the disadvantage is that the maximum drop for which drop spillway could be employed that is limited to 3 meters. So, the capacity as far as uh, maximum drop it can handle is uh, limited to 3 meters. If used for more than 3 meter drop, they may be more costlier than other structures. So, that is the I mean they can be used, but if used for more than 3 meters, uh, they may not be economical and that is why it, it is good if their use is limited within 3 meters of drop. And it is not a favorable structure where temporary spillway storage is desired to obtain a large reduction in the discharge. So, obviously, as we have seen that uh, the only possibility of storage in the gully is still the sill height which is not very significant. So, there is no question of uh, temporary spillway storage especially with reference to uh, reduction in the total discharge. So, it is which will be very very insignificant storage. So, if a, if a particular site is such where we do want to store uh, 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 water temporarily so that the discharge could be reduced uh, largely then drop spillway may not be a suitable structure. So, these are the two disadvantages of drop spillway. Now, we come to the second structure which is drop inlet spillway. 
Now, a drop inlet spillway in one in which the water enters through a horizontal circular or rectangular box type inlet and flows to outlet through a circular horizontal conduit. So, basically here as you can see that uh, the inlet is either circular or rectangular box type. So, either circular opening will be there or it could be rectangular box type, but they will be put horizontal horizontally they will be put horizontally and that is why the, it is specified that they are horizontal. That means, water has to come from all the sides and flow that is the that is the idea. And of course, the, the, the there is a conduit which is put, but that is also kept horizontal. So, the orientation is horizontal both of conduit and both of in loot, but it is a uh, but and, and then, then it is a circular or rectangular box type inlet structure could be there. And there are there are some other uh, uh, like this uh, particular shaft. This shaft is there, so this is also referred to as riser or inlet, which could be made of RCC or brick machinery. And uh, of course, uh, as you can visualize that they are uh, circular type where conduit is there. So typically, they are put behind a dam. So it's a dam where this structure is put and the water is coming out of this spillway on this side. And this conduit is conduit could be also called com, com, com concrete or corrugated metal pipe. So, it could be metallic it would be concrete. Now, there is a specific type of drop inlet spillway also that is when the inlet is funnel shaped as you can see here it is a funnel shaped structure then this type of structure or then the drop inlet spillway is referred to as a morning glory structure or glory hole structure. So, morning glory spillway or glory hole spillway that is a specific type of drop inlet spillway where the inlet is not the circular or box rectangular box type which we saw earlier, but it is a funnel shaped. So, that is a specific type of drop inlet structure which is referred as morning glory or glory hole spillway. Then uh, the discharge characteristics uh, of uh, drop inlet spillway are pretty interesting uh, because they vary with the range of head. So, there are three possibilities as long as the outflow through the box remains less than the capacity of the pipe that is at low heads discharge is governed by the riser or the inlet and the pipe flows only partially fluid. So, it when the head is small then the, the, the flow is such that the pipe if, or this conduit is only partially full then the flow is governed by the riser, riser or the inlet. When the outflow at the box exceeds the capacity of the pipe the box inlet fills and discharge is then governed by the pipe capacity. So, here when uh, the discharge is less the pipe is partially full it is the uh, it is the inlet which inlet characteristics which govern the discharge wherein when the head is high such that pipe becomes completely filled up or pump pipe runs full or the conduit runs full then it is the discharge characteristics are then governed by pipe characteristics basically. And of course, in between these two cases that is riser or wear flow or full pipe flow. So, that is riser or wear flow or full pipe flow there is a third category which is called as true flow in transition. So, there is a riser or wear flow when the head is small pipe cannot run full or pipe runs full partially filled then it is the riser cap characteristics which govern the discharge characteristics of this spillway. When the, dis when the head is becomes higher such that pipe runs full then it is the pipe which pipe characteristics which govern the discharge characteristics of spillway and in between these conditions 
there is a tube flow in transition. So, there is a third three types of uh, or discharge characteristics can be studied in three different parts. The control will shift according to the relative discharge capacity of the wear, the transition and the conduit or tunnel which obviously we, as we can see the condition. For a larger diameter crest, greater outflows can be discharged over the wear at a low heads and the transition will fill up and tube control will occur with a lesser head on the crest. So, obviously, which is quite obvious that of course, and the conditions are very clear that uh, when pipe is partially full or pipe is full completely filled up, then the shift changes. And these are the typical characteristics curves which we will discuss uh, later. Adaptability and usage if you consider then they are used for gully control when drop exceeds 3 meters that is where drop, drop spillway cannot be used. Preferred when there is a opportunity to provide temporary storage. So, both the characteristics are completely uh, reverse of the drop spillway, drop spillways cannot be used if, if temporary storage to be provided, but if temporary storage are to be provided then drop inlet spillway could be used. They are used as principal speedways for farm parts or reservoirs as we have seen that there is a dam through which the flow is controlled. They are also used as culverts in roadways and they can also be used as flood prevention structure. So, several possible uses of, of the drop inlet spillway as well. The advantages are it requires less construction material than a drop spillway which you can see that a number of parts are too little as compared to a drop spillway. And where an appreciable amount of temporary storage is available, the capacity of the spillway can be materially reduced, which is a favorable factor in downstream channel grade stabilization and flood prevention. So, a large storage could be uh, uh, put on the upstream side and only a little bit of flow is allowed to pass through the spillway. So, that is the, that's the major advantage of this kind of structure. Then, but there are certain limitations as well. A proper design is required to prevent water from channeling along the sides of the pipe. So, proper design has to be put. A head or stage of water is normally required to obtain full capacity of the inlet, which may make the bomb height unreasonably high. So, uh, I mean this is also a, an issue that uh, you have to be careful when while designing the shaft or the riser and it could be more expensive than other systems for high flow rates. So, if Q is high then they can be more expensive than other structures. Then comes the third uh, permanent structure that is shoot spillway. A shoot spillway is a steeply sloping open channel which leads the water from a higher elevation to downstream channel. So, here a steeply sloping open channel uh, from higher elevation to low elevation it takes the water. Shoot is sometimes of constant width, but is usually narrowed for economy and then widened near the end to reduce the discharge capacity. So, the width may be kept constant or it may be varied for bringing uh, or for cost cutting. And the slope of shoot must conform to the slope at the site that is longitudinal and cross sectional survey at the site is essential because a typical shape you can see then uh, obviously. Uh, the uh, slope uh, of the site is becomes very important and that is why we have to have longitudinal cross sectional survey data uh, with us uh, for designing the shoot spillway. This is a typical section through a shoot spillway as you can see here. So, this is the water level and this is the shoot section and uh, these are this could be typically RCP, RCC slabs interlocked water tight to avoid seepage and then in order to whatever little seepage may take place tile drains surrounded by gravel may be provided for taking the seepage water out. And uh, this, this uh, the thickness of this RCC could be 25 to 50 centimeter. And then these are curve, curves are designed. So, design details we will see later when we discuss this spillway in great detail. As far as the applicability is concerned, they are used when the drop exceeds 3 meters. 
they are superior to drop inlet spillway for large discharges. So, uh, drop and drop inlet this is the uh, I mean uh, uh, a drop inlet and shoot spillway they are both adopted when the drop is more than 3 meters, but if large discharges to be handled uh, shoot spillways are superior to drop inlet spillway. Preferred over drop inlet spillway when there is no opportunity to provide temporary storage. So, this is characteristics of shoot spillway is similar to drop spillway that it, there is no temporary storage, but uh, as far as drop characteristics is concerned it is similar to drop inlet spillway that it is adopted for more than 3 meters of drop. Disadvantages, there is a considerable danger of undermining due to rod ends. Additional precautions are required to handle this problem because of the profile, typical profile of this shoot profile, uh, there is always a possibility if proper care is not taken. And in poorly drained areas, there is a problem of seepage. Such areas may not be suitable for shoot spillage as seepage tends to weaken the foundation. So, uh, one has to be careful and if such areas, if it has to be constructed at all, then provisions to control the seepage are essential. So, in poorly drained areas, seepage has to be a major concern while designing or constructing these structures. So, to just to close the lecture, if you look at the permanent gully, intro, gully control structures and if we inter compare them, the drop spillway is preferred when drop is less than 3 meters and there is no provision of temporary storage on the upstream side. Drop inlet spillway is used when drop is greater than 3 meters and there is a possibility of upstream temporary storage. Shoot spillway is used when the drop is greater than 3 meters, but there is no possibility of upstream storage. So, these are the conditions depending upon the requirements one may choose uh, one or the other structure. So, we have seen that uh, there are three types of permanent structures, what are their typical characteristics and we will be spending uh, a significant amount of time in coming uh, weeks on while designing each of these structures to see uh, the functions of each of the components and other requirements. Thank you very much.